Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Porsche 911. This one came in well under Derek's guess, selling for $44,240. The Honda City didn't get any attention last week. It was unsold without a single bid. The giant dump truck was also unsold. To be fair to Derek, we really don't know what these things sell for, and this one didn't get a lot of attention. It was unsold with a high bid of 7250 He was pretty much spot on with the Subaru wagon. This one sold for $230. The Volkswagen Lupo came in for a little less than half of Derek's guess. It sold for $490. I imagine the green color kept the price down a bit. And last week, the BMW Z3 Roadster was unsold even though it was well over Derek's guess. That one got bid up to $33.90, but the seller still wouldn't let it go. That's going to do it for last week's picks. Now here's Derek with this week's. Hey guys, it's time to run through the auction picks from this week. Vehicles coming up tomorrow or the next day. You do have a chance to bid on these if you do want to. You can check out our website. There's a link to that in the description. And all of these picks are picked by you guys. They're fan picks, I guess you could say, from our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Pacific Coast Auto. Okay, so we're going to jump into this one here. We have 11, no, 10 picks for you this time. There were 11. One of them, which was going to be the thumbnail, was a really awesome car. Unfortunately, it had to be cut because that one was USS Tokyo. And USS does not like us doing videos of their sold prices. They're very picky about that, and so we can't add them in here. Very sorry about that, but it was an R34 GTR Spec M. And then the Spec M is a really... Uh, rare, I think 500 units made, has leather interior and otherwise is a V-Spec 2 trim, a very cool car. You can check that out if you want. You can go up to here, auction.pacificcoastjdm.com and then you can log in and you can check that out yourself by going here, you go Nissan and then you go down to Skyline and then you just go search and you can find it in there. I think it was like a 19, well it was an R34 so it was either 99, 2000, 2001, um, or 2002. I think that that spec is maybe a 2002. I don't know. Anyways, jumping into this first one here, we have our first pick from Jonathan Bumford. You got the uh, the thumbnail pick here because you found a pretty rare car. And a lot of people, uh, especially people in the U.S., are really into the R32 GTR because it is such an awesome car. It can be imported right away. The reason why this one is special is because this is the original nismo version of the car and that's a big deal because they only made 500 of them and what made them really popular is because these ones were legal to import in the u.s before they were 25 years old now it is 25 years old and so that doesn't matter so much other than the you know having a super rare car the nismo version came with different things like this hood molding this bumper with the vents in it these side skirts this rear lip spoiler that you can see on here. Now it, it did come with a bigger regular spoiler as well, so like a d dual spoiler. And then it had different, I believe slightly different turbos in it, a different block and various other things because it was the racing homologation version of the car. And this one must have been, is that the original paint? It is, it's just a dark picture. They all came in the gray color. It does look like a lighter gray in real life than this picture shows so you can only get it in that one color and then you can tell the version because it's one zero zero and then this number here um, maximum is 560 so some of the beginning ones weren't nismo versions but the very last one was a 560 on it and then it needs to have the one there okay so the sheet is also quite interesting taking a look at it so it's 1990 nissan skyline gtr nismo edition and there are a lot of modifications to the car. Now, Jonathan Bumford said uh, Skyline Nismo Edition looks like lots of good, many bad points. Just look at those replaced panels. So he's referring to the XX means a replaced panel on there. Any more info? Selling price maybe 1.7, too many replaced panels and dodgy mileage. I, so that was his guess is a 1.7. My guess is going to be considerably higher than that. But first off, we'll go through the condition of the car here. So unknown mileage, that's usually a no-no, but if only 500 of the car were ever made, I could live with that. So Nismo gauge set has been swapped in. Boost controller, 500 units made of the Nismo edition. The gauges now are changed to 320 kilometers an hour instead of the regular 180. They wrote EVC twice, which is a boost controller. It has HKS turbo configuration. Now usually if they don't mention otherwise, it's gonna be a, a twin turbo 
replacement, not a conversion to a single turbo. Uh, airflow meter has been taken out. Titanium exhaust HKS v -Con, uh, FCON V Pro computer, gold style, which is a computer that's not easy to use in the USA. So keep in mind when you have a modified car, if you bring it to the US, you need to tune it to US fuel, and not everyone knows how to how to tune the HKS V Con computers. Front pipe, um, I don't know what this one J I J don't know what that means. K H S G Max, I think they mean HKS, but they got that backwards or dyslexic. Uh, GT Max um, dampers, floor support bar, SARD catalyzer or catalytic converter. Um, school pot, swirl pot. Okay. The wa and the ku. Anyone who knows katakana will know that the wa and the ku look pretty similar, and this writer didn't write them very different. Okay, uh, engine has been swapped, and they think that this is a complete Nismo engine because there's a plate on the engine that says Nismo 081, and then the regular Nismo versions of the cars don't come with that, uh, that plate on them. In 2010, the car had 133 900 kilometers when the car was at auction, and at that time they said that the mileage was unknown, so really messed up mileage here because it's lower mileage now than it showed in 2010, and at that time it was already unknown mileage. And then they have a couple more history papers here detailing some of the mileage. It comes with other uh, aftermarket intercooler, blah, 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 blah. And then they wrote again Nismo engine and 500 units made for this one. So front cross member has been replaced. Dashboard comes up. You'll be able to see that. See right here. Super popular on these cars. Pretty much everybody knows that by now. But if you don't, it's impossible, pretty much impossible to get an, uh, an R32 without a bubbling dashboard. And if you get one, you're super lucky. Seat cigarette burn console has been modified, various scratches, dents. Uh, W2 means repair marks to the paint and uneven paint here. Floor side member scratched and dented. Front side member is deformed. Right front pillar has some deformation or basically what it means is it's been damaged um, from an accident then it has been repaired by a repair shop, but you're still able to kind of tell that it's been repaired if you look at it carefully. Usually I recommend not buying cars with the damaged pillars because it, it generally means a pretty uh, large accident, but in this case, it might be worth it. It really depends on the car. And uh, right front inner panel has been replaced. I find that when it comes to pillar damage like that, it doesn't really affect the price of a car that's going, like an R32 that's going to the US because there are enough buyers who are going to buy the car, they're going to sell it without ever mentioning to anyone that there is a problem, and because there are just so many of them, the I, I don't think that it affects the price in a negative way. As for price of this one, I could, I could see it going for probably about, hmm, now that I know the condition of it, maybe, maybe 2.2 million. But um, Jonathan Bumford, you said 1.7, that could be correct too. Uh, I could see that happening for sure. Okay, on to the next one here. This one from Grant Glaze. Grant Glaze says, Sunny Truck. And then Bill Courtney said, Clickbait for Derek with a winky face because he knows that I love the Sunny Trucks. And then uh, Grant Glaze said, Maybe with a wink and a sticking out tongue face. This is the emojis um, on the Facebook post. So looking at it here, the car looks pretty good. It does have some pretty terrible rust problems um, as the auction sheet shows. But no, it looks really good in the picture. I love the wheels. These look like a 12-inch wheel to me. And um, not Watanabe's. They look like Mini Lights, which is a company that makes uh, like 12, 13-inch wheels. Okay, so take a look at the diagram first. This one, P3C3W2. P3C3W2, that means extremely poor paint, very large rust and uh, marks are being repainted. So likely there's body filler, heavy body filler in this area that has rusted since it's been repaired. I wouldn't bother with a car like this if it were a car that I want for myself or a car to, to sell at a dealer. And for that reason, this one's probably gonna sell for a little amount. The mileage is unknown because it's a five digit odometer on these cars. Right now it shows 20,697 uh, kilometers. It's a 1990. 
It comes with a 1.2 liter inline four cylinder, super slow engine, but it is a carbureted engine, so it will feel a little bit special. It will smell a little bit like gasoline inside the car, which is, you know, kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Of course, you don't want to smell gasoline all the time, but it, it makes it feel like an old car for sure. This one is, it's hard to tell from the angle here if it's a long or a short bed. They come in two different lengths. It's a long bed, so a 122 is a long bed, and a 112 is a short bed, I think. And so the long bed is one foot longer or 30 centimeters longer. Okay, here's one thing I don't like. This is from the auction Bay Auk, and they don't separate their sales points from their notes. And then the way that it's... Japanese is typed in a weird way where they can split a word in the middle of the word if it continues on to the next line, so it makes it difficult to read these. And because I'm feeling like I don't want to have too much annoyance in my life at the moment, I'm not going to go over everything. It looks like the condition's not really that great. And, uh, I mean, it is cool looking, but that's about it. It might be okay to buy with the intention of not restoring it and just kind of leaving it if it's a car that you don't want to care about too much. But in that case, you probably want to buy it for less than it's actually going to sell for. I think that this one's going to sell for 180,000 yen. It feels a little bit expensive to me, but we'll see. Okay, on to the next one. And I picked the next one based solely on the person's uh, name. His name is Rec Redneck Hunter, and he picked this one here. And I have to say, I love the name, but I do have a question. Is a Redneck Hunter a hunter who's a redneck? Or is it somebody who goes around hunting rednecks? Either one, I guess. <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, okay, so this is a S13 Sylvia. Pretty rare that it's on the original wheels and suspension and, and completely original body. These are the original headlights on it. Obviously, the Sylvia is uh, the S13, or in the US, kind of similar to the 240SX Coupe version. The back is the same. The front on that has the pop-up headlights, same as the 180. Pardon me, the 240, calling it by its Japanese name. Here in Japan, they get turbocharged engines, which is much better. And uh, the Red Deck Hunter says, nice looking and low kilometers. And then Jonathan Bumford, uh, the guy from uh, before, he says, shame it's a CA. And what he's referring to is the engine. This is a CA18 engine, but it's turbo, so it's a turbo 1.8 liter. Basically, it's it's kind of like an RB20 engine with two of the cylinders cut off. They're very similar in design. A lot of people hate on them. A lot of people won't get a Sylvia because it has a CA18, but I have to say that they're not that far off on power. They're about 20 horsepower lower than the uh, SR20s. And I, I quite like them. The, from what I've seen, that they're, they're not unreliable. The SR20 will have more aftermarket support, but the CA18 is not a terrible engine. It might be. 20% less cool and for that reason I don't think that it's worth it to say it's a shame to have that engine in the car because it is a better engine than the 240SX's KA24 engine. Okay so five speed manual 73, 5, 76 kilometers. Nice clean sheet here. It comes with rear spoiler, front aero. Uh, it says front aero bumper but that's the original front aero bumper they're referring to there. Uh, what does this say? Projector headlights, aftermarket exhaust, dashboard is cracked. You can see it clearly in the picture, so that's convenient for buyers. Interior is dirty, scratched, seat wear, and a rip in the seat. These seats don't typically rip, and so that's a little bit weird, um, especially with 73, 576 kilometers, but maybe it was a heavy dude or a heavy lady. Aftermarket steering wheel is peeling. It doesn't look that bad in the picture. Seat has some color fade, and then this one here is kind of a big one. Underside surface rust and corrosion. Hard to tell how bad it is. I typically tell people not to buy cars with underside corrosion, but when the car's 25 years old, it's pretty rare to find cars without at least a little bit of corrosion on the underside, and so it, it might still be worth it. The car seems to be pretty clean. The body almost has no scratches and dents. There are a couple of really mild ones here. I think that they're not going to be that big of a deal. And then repaint marks on plenty of the panels but it is an original black car not color changed so being an original black having the original wheels on there and the suspension being a turbo engine i think that uh, this car could be pretty valuable and sell for more than the ca18 ones typically sell for and that's another thing is the ca18s will usually sell for less than the sr20s by quite a bit and so i'm going to guess 450,000 yen on this one 
Okay, on to the next one. The next one, I have to say, I don't really know anything about it, but the car looks cool, so I'm going to pick it anyway. It's from Elijah McDonald. He didn't say anything in the comments here about it. And so this is... I had to look this up because I really don't know K-cars that well, especially new K-cars. But this is... Uh, the name of this car is Daihatsu Wake, which is a pretty cool-looking car, I have to say. I've seen them drive around, didn't really care to find out what the name of them is because there's so many K cars here in Japan and you just see them everywhere and they're kind of outside of my interest so it's harder for that information to stick into my mind so it's a 2015 April probably one of the first ones because these haven't been around for a very long time GSA don't know what that means 660 C C engine got a note here from Naoko as I'm reading this that we're gonna have a skyline drop-off in 10 minutes and Andrew's on lunch uh, okay, <laughs> Octave A5, interior A, exterior A, uh, one owner, quite a bit of mileage, 26 847 for being one year. Maybe this person buys K cars and drives them like crazy for a year. Should still be in good condition, I think. So you might be able to get a good discount off of this one. CVT and turbo. I wonder how bad that is to drive. I usually don't like CVT transmissions, but 9 out of 10 people can't tell they're driving a CVT over a traditional automatic, and so for most people it doesn't really matter. Wheel scratch, body's perfect, really no marks here. I don't even know how much these sell for new. Oh, it's been cancelled. That's what the 777 means. <laughs> I like this. Look at this picture. Buy our car. It's so cool. It has a reverse camera. And that's the funny thing about K cars with reverse cameras. The cars are so small, you can almost reach your arm out the window and grab the back of the car. And yet, someone still thought it would be a good idea to put a reverse camera on it. And look at all these windows. You'd get good visibility all the way around, too. Okay, so, providing this car wasn't cancelled, I think we would probably see it go for $1.2 simply because it's such a new car. I think new, these are somewhere around 16 to 18 or so. Pretty cool, though. Like the looks of them. I would, uh, I would consider driving one of these for a family second car or something like that. Okay, on to the next one. Um, Naoko, yes. is there any way to call the driver and say that we can't get out there right away? Naoko's shrugging, shrugging her shoulders. But, we, we should go because but then I have to stop recording. Ah. 17 minutes into this. Is that Andrew? Yes, it is. Hey, Andrew, I'm recording right now, and they're doing a car drop-off. And I don't want to stop recording. Okay, I'm good. Is that okay? Yeah. Or do you want me to stop recording, because it's no, your no, lunchtime? No. So, so you should ask the driver to drive that car to the, our lot, because he is driving a big car, so they, he is waiting This is inside road. baseball and how it's like in our Skyline. office. Skyline. Well, we're receiving the Skyline. No, no, big loader is what she means, because it's yeah. come. It's not. They're not driving it here. They're putting it on a loader. Yeah, and he's got to drive it to the lot then. That's what they're yeah. supposed to do anyway. Okay, back to this video. We're we're roughly halfway through or so. So uh, on to the next one here. This is this is an awesome car. Thank you, Andrew, yep. for for doing that during our lunchtime. Uh, okay, so this is kind of like the the next version of the legacy wagon, but not really. They don't have these in Canada and the US and it really is a shame. It's a four wheel drive, turbocharged, um, seven seater, kind of version of the Legacy wagon, but they're bigger than the Legacy, but not quite a minivan. So I think it's really cool. I like minivans, they have lots of space in them, but I really don't like the way a minivan feels when you drive it. And so with something like this, it's a compromise. You get lots of people into your car, lots of space in your car, but it still feels more like a car when you drive it. And the front face on it is so aggressive and cool looking. It's probably going to drive pretty similar to other Subarus, because as far as I know, all the Subarus are basically on the same chassis. And so it's going to be Forester-like, I imagine. Maybe a little bit sportier than a Forester would be. This one comes from Brandon Decker, and he says, 2014 Subaru Lavorg. We can't have them in the States. And for this, I have to say, why Subaru? Why would you do that? Because the vehicle looks really awesome. Subaru has a weird following in the States where people will buy their stuff kind of no matter how aggressive that they look. 
and uh, I, I just think that this size of vehicle and this type of vehicle is generally good to mark up, so you wouldn't have to sell that many to make business sense of it. Could be that the seats are too small for American buyers. Usually these small size seven seaters have really tiny rear, um, kind of half seat style things, but I still think uh, awesome car. Lots of stuff here about what it comes with, like 18 inch wheels and turbocharger and four wheel drive and Subaru. Look, it's a Subaru. That's our sales point. The body looks really good. Oh, except for the back, A3 U2 on the back there. And um, almost nothing here. Wheel scratch, door wheel scratch, various scratches and dents. Interior is dirty, scratched and wear. 114, 367 is really high mileage for 2014. Oh my gosh. But should still be a great car. If you're looking to own a car for four or five years, this should be reliable for you. The amount of wear inside probably shouldn't be that high. And with this high of mileage, it's probably all um, highway, or at least a good portion highway kilometers on it. As for price of this, I could see, oh, canceled again. Ah, now I can't be correct about my predictions. Um, I would say probably 800,000 yen for this one. Could be less than that. Could be a good chunk less than that, I think. All right, on to the next one from Bill Courtney. He says, this just looks weird. And the reason I picked this is because this is kind of like a K car version of our company truck because it's a pretend pickup truck with space to put stuff in the back. I did consider buying one of these actually as the company truck. You get much more space in the back than in our company BB Open Deck, and so that's good. It has sliding doors. What other pickup truck, I guess if you could call this a pickup truck, but what other pickup truck has sliding doors on it? I don't think any of them. And so, pretty cool. So, five-speed manual, 660cc engine. It's called a high-jet van, and then what's this one? Um, deck, deck van, it's called four-wheel <laughs> deck van. Get, uh, get someone from New Zealand to uh, pronounce that. It'll sound funny. Okay, four-wheel drive, auction grade R, interior C, 67, 192 kilometers, and um, pillar, uh, pillar dent, underside corrosion, front floor wrinkled, that's from accident damage, some mild rust on the roof. Condition doesn't look that good, but it is really cool. Look, the tailgate even comes down here. I, I do wonder why, I guess for the extra seating capacity, but K trucks are so convenient in terms of what they can haul. And this is a K size vehicle with kind of limited space in the back, but you do get the extra seats. And so this would be, I believe, a four seater with a bench in the back. I, I think it's cool. And I think a vehicle like this, if you were like a dealer in the US or in Canada or in other countries that specializes in imported cars from Japan, something like this would be a really cool parts hauling vehicle. You could put your company logo on the side and want to attract the, uh, attention because of that. And it could be a, a tax write off. So pretty cool. Price for this one starts at 80 bucks. Um, mm, not importable to the USA. That's going to keep the price down. Okay, 170,000 yen will be my pick for that one. On to the next one. This one, Sean William Bellamy says, beautiful 6.0 AMG Coupe. Now here's the thing. AMG is a weird company. They started off tuning multiple different brands. For example, you can get Mitsubishi AMGs, and then they kind of tied, tied the knot with Mitsubishi. When they did that, AMGs were really popular in Japan and they decided kind of outside of Mercedes-Benz to open a branch in Japan called AMG Japan and for several years you could buy AMG Japan cars that are not made in the AMG facilities in Germany. So what it was was a Mercedes-Benz car that was sent over to Japan and then AMG Japan would take the car and make kind of identical cars to what vehicles that you could buy directly from AMG in Germany or they made some of their own. For example, they put certain engines in chassis that aren't usually in those AMG cars. That, now I don't know if this is an official AMG or if it's not and you do have to be really careful. Check the VINs when you're buying them. Starting price, 7.6 million. Obviously, it's going to be a lot. These cars, like this version of the S-Class Coupe, usually is a lot of money. 
usually a lot more for the AMG version, but this one's a special wide body version with the hammer engine, I believe. The six liter is the hammer engine. Okay, and so 1989 Mercedes-Benz AMG 6.0 Blister Fender is the name of this one. So it comes with a 6-liter engine, and that's one heck of an engine. I think it puts out somewhere in the 450, 500 horsepower, somewhere in there, that range. I don't know exactly. 88, 892 kilometers, dealer car, original optional Recaro electric seats. Love the control panel on the side of the electric seats here. Um... This is a early model version of the car, it says, and uh, white face gauge set. I guess that's a good thing. Now, this car is interesting, and it comes from an auction, Zip Osaka. And this auction is meant for people to go and see the cars in person before bidding, not necessarily for internet buying. And so they have a section at the auction that they put these really expensive cars but they don't do any of the inspection on them. I think part of the reason is because the vehicles are so, so rare, really you need to see them in person before you, you were to buy them anyway, and so they don't want the liability of being wrong in any of the notes that they put on there. The cars at this auction tend to be really high grade though is what I've seen. And we have bought some from this that have had no inspections and they turned out to be really good cars. So it is a risk, but uh, there's a possibility to get cars for good value from this auction in my opinion. It says the power seat doesn't work on one of them. Or electric power seat doesn't work. It doesn't say how many. Body should be in pretty good condition. Anyone who owns one of these cars is going to keep the car in a garage most likely in very very fine condition never touch it kind of thing and so uh, as for price without an inspection it's really hard to say but this one could be in the 95 million range maybe or I'm sorry 9.5 million range all right on to the next one the next one comes in from Bill Courtney this one had a little bit of a question thing, and this is what I requested in the last uh, video, is if you have questions about the cars, please please write them in there, and then I can answer them for you. And then you can become a pro at uh, watching these sheets. And so this is, a, obviously, it's a Honda Integra Type R, and the question here, Bill Courtney says, Integra Type R with 83,000 kilometers, grade 3B. I assume they're hiding the shift knob from Thieves. And so you can see here, no shift knob is on there. And then Raymond says, Raymond Yu says, Generally, the staff will take off all the shift knobs prior to auction. Derek should be able to explain why, and Bill Courtney says, yeah, I figured. Um, not all the auctions do that. You can do it as a seller um, at some of the auctions if you want. Like if you're a seller and you're worried about something being stolen, then you can request that something be taken off. There, I don't even know if there's a fee for that. There might be, but it's pretty common to have shift knobs taken off, especially it seems Integra Type R ones because they're made out of titanium and they're pretty valuable. And so they don't say on here, usually when it's the auction house that takes them off, they'll have a note here that says uh, shift knob is in, the auction, is in the office, and then they post that to us when we win the car. I think this one just doesn't come with the shift knob. Okay, so Integra Type R, this is the version that is not so expensive um, because they went over to the bad version of suspension, bad Honda. But still looks like a fun car, and I would still like to drive it. I've driven the Civic Type R that's this generation and very much enjoyed it. And I think the Integra would be even better because it's more the shape of car that I like. I love hatchbacks. And I think that this one looks better than the Civic Type R of the same generation. It's a 2002 Integra Type R. Auction Grade 3, Interior B, Exterior B. Auction Grade 3 is a little bit weird. It can be a really good car or it can be a bad car, but generally an auction grade 3 means either it's a bad car or it's been in a small accident that has damaged the frame in some way, but not enough that it required to be repaired so you could still drive the car. And that's probably what this one is. So let's have a look. Right front side member has a small dent and front bumper reinforcement is bent. So that's the reason why it got a grade 3. You may have some misalignment issues with some of the things, but it looks in the picture to be pretty good. So a grade three, like I said, it can be a good car depending on what's damaged to it. It doesn't get an R grade because it hasn't been repaired and that's what the R stands for. Okay, so the underside of the front bumper is scratched, winter tires on it, shift knob has been removed, seat is saggy, underside has something I can't read. 
Um, something in Surface Rust. So I don't know what this says, but if you were to ask for a translation, we would get someone smarter than me to tell you that. Wheel scratch, door mirror scratch, very scratches and dents. Body has a medium dent here that would be visible, and a medium dent here with a cracked front lip. Wheels look good on it. They're not a wheel that I particularly love, but they look good on this car. Red interior is going to make sure that you get all the ladies in your town to come sit in your car because that's exactly what ladies look for when they're looking for men. Or it can go the other way around. In fact, it probably would be easier to go the other way around. Men, if you see a girl driving this car, there's a high chance that you're going to be interested in that girl, in my opinion. Uh, simply because of the car, because <laughs> us, us guys are dumb that way. Okay, uh, on to the next one here. We have a, another bit of uh, a conversation on this one. I have to say, this is a car I never knew existed, and it's a 1971 Honda Coupe 9S. And the re like, I don't know if they made these in US or Canada. A 1971, maybe they were all used up. I've never noticed one on the road, and I believe that these were never sold as brand new cars, except for special imports. You could probably import them, but I don't think as brand new cars they were sold there, because I believe that the Accord was the first car that they sell sold in the US, and then shortly after that, the Civic. And I don't think that they ever sold this one there. And I have to question why, because it is such a good looking car. Maybe it didn't look that good back then, and that's why they were afraid. Maybe it was an expensive car to make, and they couldn't make financial sense of imp like using it as the uh, breakout car in the U.S. I don't know, but it, sh it certainly looks like an amazing car, and I think having one of these in the U.S. or Canada would be a big deal, or Europe, for that matter. There's another car at the special section of Zip Osaka where they don't give the inspection. And uh, so this one was sent in by Perry Chapel, and he says really low mileage 1971 Honda 1300. Okay, so it's called a Coupe 9S here in Japan. Because Perry called it a Honda 1300, maybe that's the international name? Somebody chime in because I don't know the answer to that one. And... Um, and then Bill Courtney says, man, sweet pick. I wonder why it didn't show up in my search. And then Perry says, it seems that Zip Osaka cars weren't showing up until I searched yesterday. And then Raymond Yu says, I saw it as well, but I dare not pick a car with no actual grading on the sheet. And so that is the thing. It's probably in really good condition. You'll probably get it for a reasonable price considering the condition because everyone else at this auction is able to see the car. But if you were to put all your eggs into that basket and assume that's the case, you might have other people that are assuming the same thing and you might end up overpaying for the car. And so probably front wheel drive, I would say. Hondas love their front wheel drive. And Hondas rear wheel drive cars from like the 60s were chain driven. And that would be really weird if this was chain driven. That's the driver calling, I bet. Where is everybody? It takes Andrew 15 minutes to walk there. I feel so bad now. Okay, so Honda... Um, oh, I didn't pick the Integra Type R price, did I? Ah, oh, my mind is melting. Okay, sorry, Andrew. Um, he's probably going to ask me about this. Integra Type R... Uh, I'm going to get 750,000 yen on this one. And then the Honda here really could be anywhere, but I'm going to guess 1.7 million for this one. Okay, and on to the very last one. This one was picked by Raymond Yu, and he says, This is a real Beck 550 Spider, unknown grade. Derek, please review this some sort of kit car. And then Bill Courtney says, Pretty sweet, be curious what it sells for. And then Raymond Yu says, Don't think it will make the auction picks because there are too many good picks from other people this week. And I have to say that this definitely qualifies as one that uh, deserves to be in the auction picks because... For one, it's not a real car, it's a replica, but it's a replica of the Porsche 550 Spider. And so this is a pretty famous car. They didn't make very many of them. I mean, Porsche didn't make very many of them, and it was a very long time ago, so these cars are rather expensive. But they're famous because this is, or the Porsche version of this car, the authentic version, is the car that killed James Dean in... When did that happen? 1959? I don't know. So James Dean was 24. He was into car racing. He was driving this car to a race and he crashed. And it is a very famous story because this car went on to crash multiple times throughout its life. So some people called it cursed. It's called the little bastard. 
which is not me trying to say naughty words on, on the YouTube. Please, YouTube censors, don't come and catch me. But uh, yeah, interesting story, so check it out. This one here is a replica based on Volkswagen. So many replicas are based on Volkswagens because you get the rear engine already, the engines are plentiful, and then the chassis is basically just rails that you can put any body on top of it that you want. And so, uh, another car in the Zip Osaka. That's three this one time. That's interesting. 9,022 kilometers, but the mileage is unknown here. It is an imported special classification VIN, so it has its own Japanese VIN here of a special otherwise non-compliant car. So kind of interesting there. Kit cars often have that. And then it has an original number, 55000233. And so this is probably the 233rd one that this company, Beck, made of the 550 Spider. 1600 cc, it says uh, Weber Twin Carbs, flat four Volkswagen with a 1600 engine in it. And it says it's an old car, so make sure that uh, you check for yourself. The mileage is gonna be unknown. It doesn't have, oh, here's the thing, and this is really interesting. Um, it, it doesn't have a top, and it doesn't have windows. This car comes with no windows. And so you can't ship this car by roll-on, roll-off. You have to ship it by container. And uh, that actually happened to us recently. We bought a Porsche Speedster, had no windows, have to ship it by container. And then shipping containers really expensive unless you have four cars. And so you have one of two options, either pay a lot for shipping or quickly find a whole bunch of other cars to buy to put it in the same container otherwise it's just not worth it uh, for costs so a car like this really really beautiful interior really needs some work but it's a super simple car and would be really easy to restore anything that needs to be restored especially with the Volkswagen engine in there and so in that respect it's like for somebody who wants a restoration project car, these can be wonderful cars because they're e it's like doing restoration on easy mode compared to you know most cars that are more complicated, especially cars from the 1980s and on start to get more complicated and more complicated. Okay, so price on this one, I would say we're probably looking in the range of about 2 million yen. Starting price is 1.5, and so that is that. Okay, so we're going to end there. A little bit longer video on this one. Uh, <laughs> now Go and Andrew aren't here, and I'm sitting here doing videos. Oh, I need to get back to work. Okay, so thanks for watching, and see you guys again next week.